What's up, everyone? Welcome to People Good. On this podcast, we host a series of bite-sized conversations on the future of work life. Discussions on the convergence of people, culture, and cause at the workplace. This show is specifically aimed at providing HR professionals and business leaders practical insights and tools to level up how they protect and empower their people. If that's you, stick around. This is your show, and I'm your host, Braven Green Elsh, founder and CEO at 3Good. On today's show, we have Mark Bernstein, Chair of Sustainability Solutions at ASU. Mark has pioneered energy and sustainability solutions across academic, private, public, and nonprofit sectors. As the Rob and Melanie Walton Chair for Sustainability Solutions at Arizona State University, Mark leads an effort to make measurable impacts on sustainability and influence decision-making toward global solutions. Mark was at the forefront of developing environmental markets, including the Acid Rain Emissions Trading Program and early markets for carbon credits. He also led strategy and marketing with Midwestern BioAg. Recently, Mark has been involved in sustainable agriculture, understanding the impacts of soil health on crop production and the environment. He has held positions of influence with the White House, Rand Corporation, Pegasus Capital Advisors, Proteus Environmental Technologies, and the University of Southern California represent USC. That's my hood. Welcome, Mark. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. So first, before we jump into it, the quote of the day by George Bernard Shaw on transformative change. The reasonable man adapts himself to the world. The unreasonable one persists in trying to adapt the world to himself. Therefore, all progress depends on the unreasonable man. I thought this was fitting, specifically given the social unrest that we're experiencing right now. And although this applies to sustainability, it also can apply to race relations. And I think it's time that we start to be more reasonable and adapt to the world that was given to us. So with that said, I'll I'll jump into the first question, Mark. What research and sustainability is ASU currently doing? What's exciting right now? Well, I must say there's lots of exciting. Arizona State University is a big place with lots of great stuff going on from um, understanding so social dynamics and sustainability to taking carbon out of the atmosphere um, and kind of everything in between. And what we're really, though, focused on right now is finding those things that we can deploy today. We are not sitting here in our ivory tower just thinking ideas. We do that. But we're actually applying them, getting them out there, making change happen um, in the way Bernard Shaw wanted us to. What is corporate social responsibility um, and, and why is it so important? Or I, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll reframe the question. How does it connect with sustainability in general? So corporate social responsibility is this big kind of umbrella thing where the corporate needs to take responsibility for what they do. And it's social, it's environmental or sustainable, um, and it's government, governance. And so what, when we look at it, we say, okay, it, you know, corporates, corporations need to take responsibility for the outcomes of what they do. And sustainability is an important piece of that. Mm, That makes sense. That's helpful uh, definition for our listeners. So what can companies do uh, to better their their footprint um, in terms of the sustainability side of things? So there are a lot of things companies need to do. They need to look at their supply chain. They need to go upstream and they need to say how they're getting things. Where are they getting it from? Is everything just taken in and waste thrown out the other end? One of the things we really like to think about in this is circularity. How can we reuse? How can we remake? Why do we have to just take things in and when we're done with them, throw them away? And corporations need to look at that too. They need to look at their supply chain. They need to look at um, how they're operating and how they can do it more efficiently and more effectively. And today we know it, it is the best decision they can make because it saves money and makes more profits. Mm-hmm. Talk to us a little bit about that. Um... I was reading that that it seems like companies that are focusing on that triple bottom line aspect um, are actually more uh, that perform better. They're more profitable. Can you tell us a little bit about that? That's interesting. Yes. Um, yeah. I mean, and we have seen that, and you know, because your costs are lower, and you tend to be more resilient. 
because you're able to be more flexible when things are more sustainable. And so companies that have taken care of how much resources they use and are actually thinking about the future, thinking about how they deal with the future and, and what their liabilities are, are the ones that are, are changing the basic way they work. Their employees are happier, um, their customers are happier, um, and they are more resilient. And so we are seeing them outperform. Uh, even right now during these times, companies that have um, both social and sustainability platforms are outperforming those who have not really put their um, heart and minds into it. Yeah, and I think sometimes for so many CEOs uh, or C-level executives, they they feel intimidated by this. They feel like, well, let's just do this little thing, and then it just turns into rhetoric, rhetoric or a PR stunt. So speak to us a little bit about some of the baby steps that companies can be taking to uh, towards this direction. Well, first thing they, they really need to do is kind of look and see what they are doing. How much mm. waste are they using? How much... You know, what is their system looking like? Just actually get an accounting at some level of what they're doing and then begin to say, okay, let's piece this apart. I, we want to achieve some goals out here. How do we get there? We get there by looking at our components and understanding it like you would build anything new, but also engaging their employees. So training employees on what sustainability is, um, can actually bring brilliant ideas from the ground up. They all don't have to come from the top. If they engage employees and, under, and help employees understand what the value benefits are, they can get great ideas from the bottom. Um, example is Starbucks Greener Apron Program, um, where uh, ASU created this program, um, an online training program, that all their employees can take. They've had over 8,000 employees take this training program, and they have seen employees at stores actually making change in the store and sustainability and engaging with customers on sustainability. So it makes the employees more engaged, um, makes the customers more engaged. Yeah, that's a great example. This is fascinating. Um, very insightful. So uh, what other companies, um, you know, that, that maybe don't have necessarily consumer packaged goods like tech companies, right? That's my background. SaaS companies. I know that some of them just think, well, we don't really use, you know, our footprint's super small. We don't use a lot of waste. Um, what can tech companies uh, be doing to uh, improve improve this initiative of CSR? Yeah, so... I mean, you do, I mean, tech companies use a lot of energy, right? You've got computers and you've got data centers. And so you can, you can improve, but your footprint, the footprint tends to be low. So it's then, what are you doing to engage your customers on these things? I mean, it may not mm. be direct, but, you know, having a goal, and we're beginning to see companies like Intuit, um, who also doesn't have a big footprint, but they have a goal out there to get to negative carbon. The only way they do that is if customers who use their products actually decide to reduce their carbon emissions, which means they need to go out and train and educate and bring that messaging out. So that, that's what sort of companies that don't have a large footprint can do. Um, and again, it, it, a lot of it comes around to training employees, right? What can employees do at home? How much food waste are you having in your um, offices? How much is getting thrown away, right? And change that environment, send those people off to other places and have them uh, you know, be uh, advocates for changing sustainability. Yeah, and I love that you you mentioned the humans, right? Because all these tech companies, whatever kind of company you have, you have thousands of employees, uh, sometimes tens of thousands, and they produce a lot of waste. So I love the fact that you mentioned that. Um, I think it's so critical. We talk about that at Three Good a lot. A lot of that has to do with, you know, also how can you get those employees and like turn that into a force for good as well on the social side um, and start to impact. Um, the world, right? Um, like water, something I'm passionate about. Water, in specific, we can get to that in a minute. But the other thing is, 
you know, what we know from the youngest generation here, Gen Zers and the and the generation following them is is they really care. Mm. And they're actually mm-hmm. making decisions based on the reputation of the company, not only in what they buy, but where they want to work. Now, before COVID, you know, there was plenty of jobs around. So you actually saw people, um, young people, not taking a job with a company because they didn't believe in their, um, you know, the, the corporate reputation and they took a job with somebody else or they're choosing to buy different products. My generation, some generations following me, in surveys always said we would, but when push comes to shove, never did. But we're seeing these younger generations actually making those decisions, and that's because they have better information. Yeah, they, they yeah. can get on their phone and they can see the reputation of the company. So it's it gets it gets you new customers, and it retains employees, and that's hard to quantify, but. Uh, we know it's there and that this next generation of consumers and employees really care and are, and are showing that they care. And it's not just in the U S we're seeing this globally. Yeah, absolutely. Very helpful. So give us a, uh, give us a quick story around the best turn about, turnaround you've been a part of. So um, it, I've only been a part of it a little bit. My, my team here at the sustainable solution service for the last five years has been working with the city of Phoenix uh, to really improve their recycling and waste management structure. And it's, it's been a, it's been a partnership and the city of Phoenix started with, we have some goals. We want to really divert the amount of waste going into landfills. And we started programs with them and help them um, as a partner, you know, come up with new ideas, come up with new strategies, try out new programs, new technologies. And, Since we started, they've almost tripled the amount of waste that's diverted from landfills, uh, which is a really great story about how you can partner together to create new ideas and new concepts and try things out. Not everything was successful, um, which is, you know, says something about the city where they're willing to try something. um, And if it doesn't work, you move on to the next thing. But it's saved the money. It's created jobs. Uh, and they're continuing to push the envelope on being innovative in the space. Yeah, that's that's so good. So with that, I love that story. Did, was there any pushback? Like, was there bureaucracy? How long did it take to get approved? Uh, or is it was it pretty simple? Um, so at the very beginning, it was um, the city actually came to us. No, I wasn't here then, but the city came, came to this program and said, you know, can you help us? And, the, and over the years, we evolved and developed together. So it was really a partnership. Now, sometimes, you know, things we suggested got some pushback and some of it was done, some of it wasn't. Uh, but it was, you know, a, a symbiotic relationship, let's put it that way, where we were in it together to achieve outcomes. Yeah, and you did achieve outcomes. Sounds like that's great. So, what what's what are you reading right now? I know you read a lot. Tell us some stuff that you're reading that's interesting. Um, so, I'm almost done with a book by Rebecca Henderson on reimagining capitalism in a world on fire. Um, and this is she is part of a a group of of younger economists who are you know making us rethink capitalism. We're not throwing away capitalism, but we. We think, and there was a recent article in Forbes magazine um, titled Five Economists Redefining Everything. Oh, yes, and they're women. And it's just this <laughs> this, this growing um, knowledge base of people who are saying, you know, we understand economics. We understand it's not been working. And, you know, we have some ideas on how to reshape that. And so it's, to me, it, it's been really insightful. And then the other thing I've just finished reading is a novel, but a novel that relates to the whole waste problem. It's by Johanna Stoberak, okay. and it's called Pigs. And the story is all the waste in the world gets thrown in the ocean and all comes up on shore of this island. And these kids um, are on the island and they grab all the waste and throw it over the, this uh, fence to feed pigs. Um, and the pigs devour everything from old sandwiches to nuclear waste. Uh, And it's this whole interplay between um, kids who are somewhat destitute, 
um, and then a, a barrel washes ashore um, with another kid inside, and they have to decide whether this kid is waste or one of them. Oh, wow. And so this whole <laughs> interplay between wow. sort of the waste and the people and the adults that are on the island and the, this engagement, it gets you thinking about, you know, the role of corporate, the role of, mm-hmm. of waste, and the role of people. And it and it, it's a it's just a cool re, you know thinking about something and um, you know it it meant something to to me and my team because we do work in in sort of waste and recycling and and circular economy. Yeah, and I love that you're reading those types of books. I mean, the social commentary uh, in that type of uh, you know fiction um, can really be. Uh, really be good um, to help us to get perspective instead of just reading business books all day long. That's good. So uh, that's it for our show with Mark Bernstein, chair of the Rob and Melanie Sustainability Solutions Service at Arizona State University. Mark, thanks for taking the time with me today. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me.